Embark on a journey where history meets innovation as we delve into the captivating realm of adaptive reuse. In this exploration, we unveil the transformative power of breathing new life into architectural treasures and repurposing spaces to suit the dynamic needs of the present. Join us in uncovering the artistry behind adaptive reuse, where structures echo with the whispers of the past, yet seamlessly integrate with the demands of the future. This is more than architectural reinvention. It's a celebration of sustainability, creativity, and the harmonious dance between tradition and modernity. Get ready to witness the fusion of heritage and progress as we navigate the inspiring landscapes of adaptive reuse and redefine the very essence of architectural legacy. Hello viewers and welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of adaptive reuse, where old structures find new life in innovative and functional ways. Let's explore how architects and designers are transforming the past into the future. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay updated on our latest episodes. Now, let's jump right in. What is adaptive reuse? Adaptive reuse is a design approach that breathes new life into existing structures, preserving their historical value while repurposing them for modern needs. It's a sustainable way to tackle urban development and reduce environmental impact. Before we delve into some exciting case studies, let's talk about the benefits of adaptive reuse. First, it promotes sustainability by recycling existing materials, reducing waste, and often requiring less energy than new construction. Second, it contributes to the preservation of cultural heritage, maintaining a connection between the past and present. Thirdly, older buildings often contain hazardous materials, and adaptive reuse helps to remove these hazardous materials from the environment. One stellar example is the High Line in New York City. What was once an abandoned elevated railway has become a beautiful park. It not only preserves the historic railway structure, but also offers a green oasis in the heart of the city, showcasing the power of adaptive reuse in transforming public spaces. Adaptive reuse isn't limited to public spaces. Residential projects are also embracing this trend. Take the example of the lofts at Westinghouse, where an old warehouse was transformed into stylish loft apartments. The blend of industrial aesthetics with modern design creates a unique and vibrant living space. Cultural institutions are also joining the adaptive reuse movement. The Tate Modern in London is a prime example, transforming a former power station into a world-renowned art gallery. This not only repurposes an industrial space, but also adds a contemporary touch to the local art scene. Beyond the aesthetic and environmental advantages, adaptive reuse can have a significant economic impact. The Pearl Brewery in San Antonio, Texas is a testament to this. By revitalizing a historic brewery, the area now thrives with shops, restaurants, and a vibrant community, showcasing the economic potential of adaptive reuse. Adaptive reuse is a global phenomenon, from the distillery district in Toronto to the 798 art zone in Beijing, architects worldwide are reimagining the potential of existing structures. It's a testament to the universality and adaptability of this approach in diverse urban landscapes. Now let's delve into a detailed case study, the transformative journey of Detroit's iconic Michigan Central Station. Just a few years ago, this architectural marvel, standing tall since 1913, seemed to mark the edge of the world. Once a grand Beaux-Arts train depot, Michigan Central Station had sadly deteriorated into a haunting spectacle, capturing the imagination of ruined photographers. In 2018, the narrative took a turn when Ford Motor Company stepped in, rescuing the property from imminent demolition. The vision? to transform it into the focal point of a groundbreaking 30-acre mobility innovation campus. Fast forward five years, and the campus, intricately woven together by plazas and parks, stands not only as a hub for mobility experiments, but also as a crucible for architectural experimentation. This evolution is significantly influenced by the unprecedented changes reshaping office, retail, and hospitality spaces catalyzed by the amplified impact of COVID-19. If you're enjoying this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up 
and subscribe to our channel for more interesting episodes. One key player in this narrative is the 270,000 square foot book depository building, a brick clad art deco gem adjacent to Michigan Central. Crafted by legendary architect Albert Kahn in the 1930s, this structure has undergone multiple transformations. Guided by the design prowess of Gensler, Shell, and Civilian interiors, the building is a testament to flexibility and readiness for future transformations. The designers introduced much needed natural light and space by slicing through the building's patterned blonde brick walls and creating massive steel edged window walls and a pillow top skylight. The outcome? Flexible spaces are crafted by opening sections of the second and third floors, creating an inviting open atrium with connecting stairs and interwoven spaces for various activities. From working and prototyping to lounging and dining, the building now breathes with newfound vitality. Structural modifications, such as altering trademark martini columns and removing a large loading dock, gave rise to an expansive new entrance and a vibrant ground floor paseo. The building's design isn't just about the present, it's an investment in future evolution. This adaptability marks the book depository as a model for flexible adaptive reuse. Extra structural steel reinforcement under the shop areas accommodates the weight of the next generation of machinery, while additional steel under the roof deck allows for substantial expansion. In contrast, its soon-to-open neighbor, Michigan Central Station, though a creative reuse marvel, faces challenges navigating its limitations. The historical significance and funding tied to historic tax credits constrain its flexibility. While it's a more straightforward renovation, elasticity becomes a tall challenge. The entire city of Detroit serves as a dynamic laboratory for reuse, with historic buildings finding new life through various approaches, reflecting the diverse tapestry of architectural transformations unfolding across the city. One notable success on Washington Boulevard is Louis Camper's Book Tower, 1926, a Beaux Arts office building with a 38-story annex. Led by Detroit developer Bedrock and New York architects ODA, the tower reopened in June as a long-stay hotel residences, restaurants, and event spaces. Similarly, at Michigan Central, a diverse mixed-use program strategically fosters energy and flexibility, effectively future-proofing the campus. Each building, despite limitations, is designed to morph and provide space for small companies to grow. The flexibility extends across the campus, allowing companies to transition seamlessly from the factory to the book depository, and finally, to business offices inside Michigan Central Station. Michigan Central Station transcends individual buildings, emphasizing the importance of flexibility in the spaces surrounding them. In a departure from the past, the campus actively integrates parks, plazas, and walkways, connected to the city via arteries like the Joe Louis Greenway. In a unique move, elevated former train tracks behind the station are being converted into the platform, a place to test and showcase mobility solutions like scooters, drones, e-bikes, and autonomous vehicles. As Melissa Dittmer, head of the place at Michigan Central, aptly puts it, cities are living organisms that evolve through different chapters and ride waves of cultural and technological change. And that brings us to the end of today's episode on adaptive reuse. From parks and residential spaces to cultural institutions, the possibilities are endless. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which adaptive reuse project impressed you the most. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, thanks for watching.